What's up guys, Sportshot here, and today I'm going to be going over the second part of the Crunker Map Editor tutorial, and I'll be showing you guys how to upload, update, how to export, and do a whole bunch of stuff with your maps, and also I'll be showing you guys some more advanced tools that you can use on your maps to make them function much better. Anyway, let's get right into it. Alright, so we are just going to get right into it here, and if you haven't watched the first, um episode of this you're going to probably want to do that if you are new to the map editor but if you just want to know how to do some stuff that I have um, said in the description that I'll be showing in this video um, let's just get right into it so I'll be showing you guys first how to import export publish and update all of your maps so um, if you don't know maps are actually saved in a text file and I'll be showing you guys a map that I have been working on so I'm gonna open up this text file right here on my other monitor and I'll drag it onto my other screen right here. So this is what a Crunker map save looks like. Now I started this map uh, yesterday and all you have to do to import it is um, do control A, control C to copy and then file import and then you enter the input into here, paste it and you submit and you'll have your map loaded right up. Now say you want to export this map to save it to your file so you want to work on it later. All you have to do is go to file, export and it will come up with a um, export thing here and you just click save and that will save it. Now I'm not going to do that because I already have the save file for this map. Now say you want to publish it, all you have to do is go down here, click publish and you should have um, it just be published to your account. Now if you don't know how that works, all you have to do is um, go back to the actual Crunker tab. You have this right here and you can add in a thumbnail, so I'm just gonna add in like the uh, hard hat PNG. Um, you can add a YouTube link, which will be basically like a, a video for it. Um, you can also add GIFs um, to your thumbnail, kind of like this Firefly Royale thing, so if you wanna animate it to get more clicks, you can also do that, and if you want to, you can type in a description for the map, but I'm not gonna be doing that yet. Or I'm not gonna be doing that right now because this is just a um, test upload. You can also upload custom assets, which is kind of like the truck um, in Little Town in the middle of the map. Um, it is just a certain part of a map. It's not an actual map itself, um, but I'll get into that later. So now all we have to do is publish. Now also to update it, um, all you have to do basically is um, type in the same exact name to the map. All right, so if you actually just wanna name your map right here, all you have to do is go into this right here and you can type in whatever you want your uh, map name to be. Just make absolutely sure it is not the same exact name as one of your other maps um, or else it will update that map instead of publishing a separate one. Um, so what you wanna do, unless you wanna update the map, but um, I'll be typing in a map name here. So I'm gonna be typing in like uh, boardwalk, um, uncomplete and then you can have a welcome message in here custom one so when you um, load into the game it'll basically be a message uh, right before you spawn in and if you want to have any mods automatically load up so say you want somebody to have a um, like different gun skin or something like that all you have to do is go into um, here and then you have to go back into Crunker and basically just find a mod. I'll get to that real quick. So you wanna to go to mods and um, basically like this, all you have to do is load up the mod right here, click share. Um, so if you want people to have a crucial mod, all you have to do is, like I did, click that question mark, click share, and then you can go back into here and type in um, the share link for the mod and that will be automatically um, added and also if you just want to select them from here you can do that as well all right now i'm going to be going over some of the more advanced tools right here so if you want to go into object and tools um, we have a whole bunch of things here now most of these are for different game modes so if you want to have a score zone right here essentially what a score zone will do is it will be kind of like a um point on a um, like the point map or if you want to play King of the Hill this will be a point so you will have um, you might want to put it like right where people can stand and then like make it kind of big and essentially this will be just like a capture point 
And to add in team-based things, essentially what you have to do is go into um, get whatever team-based thing. I'm going to be going for the flag right now. And what you want to do is want to make sure that one flag is for one team and the other flag is for the other team. Um, this will work with zones, anything team related. You want to make sure that one um, is for one team and the other is for the other team. So you'll have one flag for one team be there and the other one for the opposing team be there. Um, just in case you don't want both flags for the same team. And then we have some other fairly self-explanatory things in here like verified zone, only verified players can go in. Premium zone, same thing with that. Um, same thing with that, but with only premium players. Now you have, um, I'm going to be going over the deposit box right now. So this will be a deposit box for a certain team, which you can set right here. If it's for default, anybody can um, use it. And essentially what you can do is um, have it so that teams can use this kind of as a bank account. So some people can put in certain amounts, which you can um, have in here, and people can withdraw certain amounts, but you can only withdraw one static amount and by that i mean you can only withdraw or um deposit the same amount and that you already kind of have if that makes sense so if you put this here both to 1000 you can only go 1000 1000 um so yeah all right so next i'm going to be going over groups now groups are extremely important if you want to make repeating structures as it will not take nearly the same amount of time you won't have to calculate distances as much um, kind of like how I did with this boardwalk right here with all of these cubes. So essentially what you want to do is I'm going to duplicate this and move it out to here. So say I want to create fence posts all along or all um, along here at a certain distance. What you want to do is duplicate it, get however many um, you actually want. So I'm going to have it be at a distance like that. Now I'm gonna make a group of five right here so it doesn't take too long to duplicate the groups into different sections. And next what you wanna do is you wanna go kind of right into the object with your camera. Um, this just makes it easier. So when you click placeholder, it will spawn in right with your camera. Now what you wanna do is spread this over what you wanna group up and do a singular asset. Then you wanna go into um, object, group, Create. Now you want to make sure that you have the placeholder that you want to be grouping grouped. So when you create that, all of these will be grouped up and kind of transported and duplicated as a singular asset. So now I can um, make this wall five times faster essentially. Now I'm going to be going over this component tab with, which is probably the most important thing if you want your um, graphics in the map to look really nice. So I'm going to be going over environment right here, which is mostly just skybox. So what you want to do is go over, um, if you want your sky to look different, you have two um, options here, solid and gradient. So your first one will be um, solid, obviously, and this will just be one static color throughout the entire sky. Now, if you want a more detailed sky, you can go down here to gradient and you can have um, different colors at different levels. So you have the top of your sky up here. And then here, if I want the middle to just be white, it can be white. And the bottom, maybe I want it to be red for some reason. I can have that be red. And you can see right here, red on the bottom, blue on top, white in the middle. And you also have other um, things in here, like the sound tab. Now you guys can test these out for yourselves, but um, essentially you will hear a background noise on every um, official Krunker map. That is what this is right here. So um, kind of like Kanji with City or Sandstorm with Desert. Um, the Storm one is with the... Um, ah, I forget the name of the map. It's the one with the green tent on it with the giant green tower in the middle. But um, essentially you just kind of select the sound that you want. The intensity right here is actually going to be the um, color intensity right here. Now, I, at first, I thought it would actually be the volume, like when I first loaded up the map editor, but if you want it to be like a really bright map, you can do that, or like a really blue map, and then you can also change how, like, intense that color is. So if you want like a um, different color vibe to the map, you can have it be done with that. Now, um, back in the environment tab, the light is kind of the same thing as that, it's just another overlay. 
to um, kind of show light, although you do have different options right here. And the light is projected from this cube, or actually this spherical object right here. And it is projected down towards the center of the map. So you can change up the distance that you want it to be. So let me put it back into the middle right here. So you can see that it will change distance when I move that in and out. The intensity will be how intense the lights are and the angle will be where the light is coming in from. So if you want the sun to be like right near the horizon, you can just put it right near the horizon. And maybe you want it to be over the water here, so you can just kind of move it with the Y coordinate right here. Now shadows and fog are fairly easy to understand, so I'm not going to take too much time going over them. But you have your distance down here, and this is what that will look like. And your color will just change the overall color of the fog. So now we're going to get into automatically generated terrain right here. So with this terrain, all you have to do is type in whatever seed you want. So maybe you want to save it for later. And you can change different orientations and dimensions of it. So I'm going to zoom out here quite a bit to see all of it. So you can see that we have grassland down here and mountains and stuff. And you can change the colors of them all down here. You can also change different heights and widths. You can change how big you want it to be through length and width too. And if you want it to be random, you can just kind of randomly generate a seed. And that is pretty useful if you're looking for something fairly specific, but you also want it to be um, kind of encompassing the map. And to get rid of the um, terrain, if you actually decide that you don't want it, all you have to do is delete the seed and it will delete all of the terrain. And now there are some tools up here, although I wasn't able to figure out what most of these are. I will, um, if anybody knows how to actually use these bottom three, please tell me in the comments and I will pin your comment. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how to use this text generator, which is pretty simple. So if you want to put in some text, all you have to do is that. Um, you actually have to select an um, object. So if I want to use this cube right here, I can bring it down here. And if I want the text to be based off of it, all I have to do is go back up into Component, Tools, type in whatever text I want, and it will be made right here out of some other things. And you can just kind of change it up however you need. So that's going to be about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And if I missed anything or if you guys have any questions on how anything works, all you have to do is comment down below and I will answer it to, my, to the best of my ability. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you did learn something or you enjoyed the video. So yeah, thanks for watching.